For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is Promised Land Proclamations with Daughter of Judah. Today's offering is titled, The Derechos Didn't Destroy You. And so if you're not sure what a derecho is, it's a line of intense, widespread, and fast-moving windstorms, and sometimes thunderstorms, that move across a great distance. And it's characterized by damaging winds. And in this case, it means the storms of your life. And you have faced many derechos. You have faced many, many, many You just have. You've faced many of these strong, intense, widespread storms, right? Fast moving and they've hit you and attacked you. And of course, the purpose was to stop you, right? That's the goal is to stop you from walking in the purpose and calling of God. And so this word is speaking to the storms that you've already faced and the storms that you will continue to face. Because remember, we will always be fighting the enemy as long as we are in the physical flesh. And it doesn't just mean fighting you know, our flesh, but it also means fighting others and the storms that come in our life. So this is the word the Father gave. For the Lord thy God is merciful. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. God lives here. The streets are safe. God at your service from crack of dawn. My son, and he's speaking, of course, to his daughters as well. My son, my daughter, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under your feet. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Yahweh. Welcome, my brother and my sister. As is the custom, the definitions will be in the instruction box as well as the actual word and the scriptures that were given for us to study and for God to comfort us, right? The word of God is there to encourage, to instruct, to edify, to correct, all the things, right? And of course, we're children of the Most High God. And the Father today is speaking about the, the we've had derechos in our life, which is these winds of, of, you know, fierce attack, right? And they have not destroyed you, even though it has oftentimes looked like you would be destroyed, right? There has been much crying, much outpouring in the body of Christ about these, these storms in our lives. And it can represent anything, death, loss, destruction, theft, um, misery, attacks, uh, uh, dis anything. Any of the storms that have happened in your life, they're represented, you know, in this in this word that the Father's giving. And so remember that God tells us that if we accept his words and we store up the commandments within us and that if we turn our ear to wisdom and we apply our heart to understanding, if we call out to him for insight, if we cry loud and we say, I want understanding. And if we look for it, like people look for money, you know, like silver, like if you lost money, you'd keep searching till you found it, right? If we search for it like hidden treasure, then we'll understand and he'll, he'll show us, right? 
That's what he says. And so our father's not a liar. You know, he is not a liar. And so we are called as a part of the body of Christ to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, right? That's our, that's our true service. And so what that means is that we are to surrender all the storms in our life because they're for a purpose, right? And so God is saying these derechos, they have not destroyed you. They have only strengthened you. The attacks of others and the attack, the, the enemy attacking you and taking things from you and hurting you and just all of it really was to strengthen you because you have to admit now you can pray by fire. Now you know, you know, that God is with you in the storm. Just like, you know, when they were in the boat, the disciples were in the boat and the storm was just going crazy. And, you know, Lord Jesus is in the back of the boat and he's napping. You know, he knows the father. He's, he is the father in the flesh. And so they come to him and says, Lord, don't you care, Lord, that the storm's going to kill us all. So he stands up and he says, uh, peace be still to the storm, right? And it stops raging. And so, of course, they stop and they say, what manner of man is this that the, even the winds and the sea take his instruction, of course. And it was God in the flesh, right? That's who Jesus Christ is. And so that's what God's speaking to us is that he now has calmed the storm. The season of that rough, really rough season is over. As I spoke on this channel, it's a season shift. And so now these attacking things, they, God is dealing with them. He, he, he is handling it and he's God all by himself. And so these enemy spirits are now facing the wrath of God. So they're very distracted over there. They don't have time to mess with you any longer. And of course, this is an opportunity, you know, just like if I have never really played sports, but if you play sports, you know, when there's a distraction on the other side, that's when you go in for the kill, right? And so you, you go in to possess your possession. And that's what this is talking about. This whole series is about God's leading you in to possess your possession, whatever that is. And he's making a way where the enemy can no longer attack you. And he's even confirming for you that, yes, these, these winds and storms in your life, um, they came, but they did not destroy you. Just like the scripture says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And your righteousness is of me, right? God speaking. He says, your righteousness is of me. They haven't been attacking you. They've been attacking Jesus Christ inside of you, right? And who can fight the living God, right? Who can? But of course, the enemy is the enemy of our souls, the devil, Belial, he, his job is to attack us, to kill, steal, and destroy. But all the circumstances and all the storms, whether it's been loss of life, whether it's been um, loss of business, loss of finance, loss of family, there's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of loss. And they, they were these storms, and they did not destroy you. And they came powerfully. Just like, you know, when, we, when they speak about these the, um, derecho winds, they're, they're intense. They're a straight line, intense, widespread, and fast-moving windstorms. Um, and sometimes even thunderstorms and they move across a great distance and they're characterized by damaging winds. Okay. So these are the storms of your life, right? You have faced many derechos, many attacks, many, many intense attacks. And the goal being to take you down so that you would not go into the promised land to possess your possession because there is a seat, a place where God is putting you. Remember in the scriptures that says, when they say there is a casting down, speaking of other people, right? We say there's a rising up, right? That's what the Bible says. That's what the scriptures say. And so these other people are seeing um, that there is a um, casting down right now, right? They're, they're seeing a casting down. You're seeing changes happening. And so when men are cast down, then we're to say there's a lifting up. And God says he'll save the humble person. And so... You that have come, you know, you're very humble in spirit. You have continued to try to work your way through these attacks. You haven't given up. You haven't laid down. You haven't sat down and just said, okay, I quit. Uh, plenty of times we've all said, I, I, I'm stopping, I'm quitting. But the Spirit of the Lord has encouraged us and, and brought us back through safely, right? And so, and, and taught us to fight. Again, this is very, very important. God, God is teaching us to fight in the spirit that has been the whole point because he he wouldn't be the good god that he says he is if we if he gave us a promise or a possession and then we weren't able to maintain the possession right we how good would that be that's that's 
that would be terrible, right? Well, here I gave you this gift, but you're not able to maintain it. So just like if you were to give a young child something that they would break, you know, you know, they would really want the gift, but then they would break it and they'd be very upset. And so this, our father's in the same way. And the storms have been allowed, just like the storms allowed in Job's life. Many people have not considered this. And I had not considered this. I felt very isolated, um, estranged from God, angry with God, and and really ticked off because I felt like, you know, not that I thought I was perfect, but I was like, how come this these attacks just keep coming on all sides? And I had never considered, but God revealed to me that just as in the case of Job, many of his children, he allowed the enemy to attack because it was a job promotion. Remember, he says, remember, God says to the devil, well, consider my servant Job. And then the devil says, well, because God says, you know, he's a righteous man. He's a righteous dude. Job's righteous. And the devil says, well, that's because you have a hedge of protection around him. And I bet if you take that hedge of protection around him, he'll curse your name. So, right. And so it's a, it was an opportunity for promotion. God was wanting to see, you know, he already knows what we're going to do, but he wanted us to see how we would react to all these things, you know, would we remain faithful? And that does not mean perfect. And that doesn't mean many of us have not laid down the middle floor and said, I quit. I'm giving up. I don't understand. But hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. The spirit of living God has continued to fan the flames of faith in our heart. He's continued just like, you know, in the scriptures with Elijah, with Ezekiel, he would send his comforting and ministering angels to help, right? He's given us a season of rest so that we could come out fighting again. Remember, it says in the scriptures, since the beginning of time, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force, right? You know, what does it mean? The powerful take it by force. We fight back, we say no to the enemy, no to the storms, no to the derechos. I'm not going to let you destroy me. I am a child of the most high God, right? The, the father has said to us, no evil shall befall us. Matter of fact, it says in the scriptures, though a thousand fall at your left and 10,000 at your right, it will not come near unto you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So it says, though, a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right, it's not going to come even near your door. You will only witness the wicked. You'll only witness the destruction of the wicked ones. It's not going to touch you. And so the reason why this has been allowed, this attack has been allowed so that we God could reveal to us so we could see how deep our faith was. Right. We have indomitable, bottomless faith in our beautiful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, the great I am right? Beside him, there is no other God. And so he can allow the enemy to make a fool of himself and allow these storms of your life in your life so that he can prove them wrong. And that's exactly what's been happening. The directions have did not destroy you because God has preserved you for a purpose and a time. And you are going in to possess your possession, whatever that is, whatever that is. And it looks different for so many different children. And so he wants you to, to know confidently that not only did the prior storms not get you, neither will any future storms. And you can laugh in the face of a storm because your Lord and Savior will say, peace be still, right? We're supposed to count it all joy when we suffer these things because such is the kingdom of God, right? You know, if you're not suffering with Christ Jesus, you're none of his. And so I speak to this because there's been plenty of storms in my life. And so you've been led here because you have also had attack after attack after attack after attack. You've had intense widespread, fast moving attacks, right? And thunderstorms in your life. And, and they have moved across great distances to take you down. Why? Because you're a child of the most high God. And he has saved you for a purpose in time such as this. We are a royal priesthood, a, a, a royal priesthood, kings, priests, and judges. And he is casting down false people in false seats, the liars and deceivers. And he's raising up his children to speak the truth. And so how can we stand if, if, if we haven't been tested, right, in the fires of affliction. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fire, right? Came out not even smelling like smoke. They were even burned up. Matter of fact, everybody that was around bent down and worshiped their God because they knew, okay, that's the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's what God's doing in this season. He's revealing who his true children are so that he can, so, because they're the light of the world. So these lying people that call themselves Christians, and I, I use air quotes there, that aren't really following Christ. He, there are people on the planet that God wants to have the gospel, and he wants to show exactly who are his real children so that they can lead these others to Christ Jesus, not the deceivers, right? They're going to be cast down right now. And so hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ, that none of, of the storms in your life, they, they did not destroy you, and they were never going to be allowed to destroy you. 
That is the fact. That is the fact of God. God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. Yet though they form, right? They're going to gather. It even says the enemies will gather, but they'll also scatter. So he has promised you that no weapon will ever prosper. And I'm here to testify a even a demonic attack in my home did not prosper. And I want to speak to this that even though I've never been in a bar, I've never lived a rowdy lifestyle or lived any kind of, you know, I had parents who stayed in the bar all the time when I was a child and I had to babysit my little sisters. And so I didn't make that a lifestyle choice and that's glory to Jesus Christ. And so I had never lived in any kind of dangerous situation. I was a textile designer, but I want you to know that I have almost been shot and killed four times. Once when I was seven, once when I was 13, once when I was 19 and once when I was grown, of course, the terrible tragedy that happened in my house. Four times the devil through enemy spirits tried to come and kill me. These are derechos that formed in my life, right? They, these, these intense winds. We got to kill her because if we don't kill her, she's someday going to speak the truth. God's going to bring her through and she's going to help her brothers and sisters get out. And she's going to explain what's going on. And she's going to push back against the forces and the kingdom of darkness, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. It's exactly what was foretold and is happening. Same thing for you, my brother and sister. You have a purpose and a calling over your life. And so the enemy has tried to kill you either through sickness, through actual trying to murder you, um, through word curses, through hate. However, the, you know, the storms came, they came and they were authorized in the courts of heaven because God already knew he was going to bring you through. And of course, we get empowered when we realize, wow, I went through that and God brought me through and I, I didn't even, I don't even smell like smoke. I was in the fire of affliction and I'm just fine. There's not one hair on my head that's singed. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty, right? All praise to the most high God. This is all due to God's power, all, all due to God's glory. It's for our good and his glory. Everything is. That's what he says. And so we continue to stand on the word of God. And that is what he is speaking right now to his children to possess your possession. Remember, the promised land is a mental place first. You have to have authority over your mind, your body, your 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 territory. That's your first territory before God's going to give you territory in the hearts and minds of other people or actual territory on the earth. He has to have, you know, about his word and the strength and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. How do you gain that through practice, right? What if you've never been attacked and then you get attacked? You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know what to do. So like many times we've been attacked and we didn't even realize it was the enemy, right? And some of the storms we brought into our own life, some of the intense fires of afflictions we brought into our own life through disobedience, right? Through not asking God, through not testing the spirits. You know, we want what we want. The heart wants what it wants, you know, but the heart's wicked. God has already said the hearts of man are wicked. So we have to trust God. So the derechos will never be allowed to destroy you. Whatever storm enters in your life, it will not destroy you because God has already promised you are the seed, the covenant seed of Abraham. He already promised father Abraham. So it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with father God remaining faithful to himself. So I need to speak to that because for plenty of you, it's been a mental attack. The spiritual warfare has been in your mind. Is that really God? Is that God speaking to me? Did he say that? How can I know for sure? Well, remember the just walk by faith, not by sight. And God works in and through men and he speaks in and through men. Why does he do that? Because he wants people to know that he, he's going to speak through you and he's going to use you to speak to other people. And so if you don't have that in your heart and you can't grab a hold of that, you know, how will you operate in your purpose? So that's why he works in and through men. He speaks through his people and they operate in faith. They believe that God has spoken to them. He, he's laid it on their heart. He's given this word for the body of Christ and it's to strengthen the body. Every one of the attacks we went through, they're not about, it's not about us. It's to strengthen us so that we can go forth and strengthen our brothers and sisters. Just like he told Peter, Peter, when you recover yourself, go back and strengthen your brothers and sisters, right? Because Peter kind of, you know, just it's a faith walk and Peter was like no I'm not going to deny you and he ends up denying him but he also ends up being one of the disciples the three that is at the Mount of Transfiguration so that is relative to the relationship we have with Jesus Christ and when we walk through the the wilderness season right of is that you I'm not sure I don't know right plenty of people um father has mentioned it to me many times that he has spoken to them about they are leaving to go to another location or they're entering into a training program it's not just location but for a lot of people on this channel it is actual physically moving and so but they're worried and they're not sure was that really god 
You know, and you can ask God for as many confirmations as you want, but you can also extend things for a long time because how many confirmations do you need? He'll give you as many as you want, but each time you're asking for a confirmation, that's extending the time, right? And it's impossible to please God without faith. He wants us to walk by faith. You know, yes, if Jesus Christ shows up in the person and says, hey, come on, let's go do this. Well, that's not faith. He showed up in the person, in the flesh, right? That's, that's not faith. You have to believe that that's the Holy Spirit speaking on your heart, speaking to you, um, leaning you, leading you and guiding you. You know, that's how the Holy Spirit works. Why does he work that way? Because it's by faith. He wants to strengthen your faith so that you can go and help strengthen your brothers and sisters, because that's the goal. That's the goal. My brother and sister is for us to strengthen the entire body, right? We are, we are literally pulling down the kingdom of heaven to earth. Remember the kingdom of heaven is going to come to earth. And Jesus Christ is going to reign and rule with an iron rod, the millennial rule, right? The millennial reign. And we are going to reign with him as kings, priests, and judges. That's what the Bible says. Okay? That's what the Bible says. And so the lukewarm church doesn't teach that and plenty of people don't believe it. But you are not like them that shrink away from the truth of God. You've been led here because you believe God. You have been led here because you believe God. And so, hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ, that none of these these intense attacks have destroyed you, nor will they ever be allowed to in Jesus' mighty name. Your Lord God, you know, the Lord God is, he goes with you. He's been fighting for you against your enemies, and he has given you the victory. His arm's not too short to deliver you, and his ear is not too dull to hear your cries. You remember, he says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So this includes these mental attacks, okay? So for many that have been led here, they are under heavy, intense mental warfare where the enemy is trying to get them to doubt what their father has said. Now, first off, for you to identify the voice of God means you need to read your Bible more. And this is, this is for all of us. All of us, no matter how much you read it, we always need to read it more because it's, the, it's, it's relationship with God. That is the word of God. That's him in the flesh, right? We need to read his word every day and wash ourselves in it, you know, inside and out. That's how we wash ourselves. That's how we can identify his voice. Because a lot of times you'll hear, you know, people that think they know Jesus, they'll say that Jesus told them something, but it is not line up in the scripture. And when the father speaks, it will always line up in the scripture. When someone says, God said this, or they say, this is the word of Yahweh. This is the word of God of most high. It has to line up with the scripture or else that person's a liar, right? That makes the person a liar. And so you need to be intensely familiar with the word of God in the scriptures. We need to be in the secret place. We need to be praying. We need to be worshiping. We need to be doing these things. But most importantly, it's impossible to please God without faith. So he wants you to walk in faith. And so you take the first step. And many of my brothers and sisters are like myself. You know, I wanted the whole itinerary. I wanted to know exactly what was going to happen when I left and who I was going to meet and what it would look like and what would I be doing. You know, I wanted every detail every single detail. Okay, my brother and my sister, excuse that, it was an interruption, I had to pause the video. But all in all, what the Father is saying to you, and he wants you to remember, is that the storms of life have not destroyed you, and that has been to his protection and his covering. And he wants you to have faith and believe that as you go into this next season, there will be storms, there will be attacks, but those aren't going to be allowed to destroy you either in Jesus' mighty name, okay? And so keep in mind that the scriptures are available inside the information box and as well as the actual word from the Father. And thank you, Father, for reminding me. We need to remember always that when the word of God comes to us, it comes with scripture to support it. If someone is saying that God has spoken or sent a message, the scripture needs to support it. And we need to be faithful, right, Um, as children of God. And we need to pick up our Bibles and open up the scriptures and study to show ourselves approved. What does that mean? To sit and, and think on the word, to ruminate on the word, to to ask the Father, please speak to me through this. Is this a message for me? And what are you saying to me personally? And these things are done by faith, believing that the Father will do it. Remember, he says that he has the answer even before the question leaves our lips, right? He has the answer. And so we just need to believe by faith. And so I encourage you, my brother and sister, to not be fearful of any storms, of these derechos, these winds, these strong, intense attacks, and to continue to to praise God the Lord God Almighty who has brought you through. He promises to never leave you. You know, his arm's not too short. 
And this is a season where he is raising you up and he wants you to walk in faith and really stand up and, you know, and testify. Remember, that strengthens the body. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They're a reminder to testify about what God has done for you and it, and what he's doing in and through you. So, of course, you know, the father, I want to testify that there there was absolutely an attack many attacks, demonic forces, but each, every single time, each time the father brought me through. Now in the midst of it, I wasn't sure I could even feel that he was there. You know, many times the body of Christ says, you know, well, I can't even tell if the father's talking to me or I can't feel that he's there. Well, then we have to remind ourselves that he's promised to never leave us or forsake us. And of course, if you're really honest with yourself, do you think you've been left alone on this planet? Because many of you come from families that are just filled with wickedness, right? And so you have to know that it was Jesus Christ himself and his ministering angels who's been taking care of you and kept you alive and brought you through the storm, right? It wasn't you. You didn't do it. You know, matter matter of fact, many times you had people in your life who were working wickedness trying to dis- destroy you. And you you were giving them the information. So many times I gave my enemies, you know, the the complete plan. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like the manifest. I would say, okay, well, the Father said this, and he's going to do this, and he's going to take me there. And this is what he said. And here the enemy had the game plan. And so, of course, if you, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about football right now, you know, if you have two football coaches and they have their playbook, you never, one of them's not going to let the other one see their playbook, right? But as children of God, many times God does not tell us the plans in the playbook because he knows we're going to speak out loud and, and we're going to, that's going to invite the enemy in. And, oh, there's a plan over there. And so the workers of iniquity, the kingdom of darkness down there, they hold meetings. You know, there's boardrooms in hell. Now, I know people deny that, but that's the truth of God. There are boardrooms in hell, and they have meetings about you. And so they they discuss, well, well, she said this, so let's attack in this way. Let's fight her that way. Let's fight him this way. Let's attack them that way, right? And so we we, these storms in our life, they're there to prove the sovereignty of God. Remember, Jesus Christ said, peace, be still. And right away, and these are the same disciples that had seen plenty of miracles already from God. So they're wondering, you know, like, who is, who is this? you know, man that can just tell the storm to be still. And the reason why God continues to show these miracles in our life and his faithfulness is because we forget. We forget, just like Israel in the Bible, because we are Israel, the children of God forget. They forget how many miracles he's already performed, how many times he's already brought you through, how many times he's taken care of you, right? Again and again and again, he's done these things. And we, we tend to forget. We tend to forget. So we have to remind ourselves. And we need to remind one another and testify. Because though a weapon formed against me, and though people gathered... The fact is that the spirit of the living God is the one who brought me through. And he is the one that canceled the plans of the enemy. And he's the one that attacked them with fire, right? He's the one. He, he lifted up a standard against them. Yeah, that's what he did. Okay, and so the mountains tremble, right? The mountains tremble when they, at God's voice. And so he has already promised to protect us from anything that's coming at the earth and that we are only going to see the destruction of the wicked one. We're only going to see with our eyes, these wicked folks. And so I said all that to say this, those derechos, those, those attacks, the winds that have been in your life that were sent to destroy you, they did not destroy you in Jesus mighty name. They did not destroy you, nor will they ever be allowed to destroy you in Jesus mighty name. This has been promised land proclamations with daughter of Judah My brother, my sister, I bless you with the peace of Christ and in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. May you have a wonderful rest of your day.